Creek Solutions. Um, this is Joseph Brasher Jr. and Joseph Brasher Sr. He's CEO at Clear Creek Solutions. Um, and we're gonna talk about what we call the grand unification theory of stormwater design, right? That's pretty bold when you think about grand unification, but it definitely applies to this topic because we're gonna dive into how there's so many different methods for determining uh, stormwater mitigation and runoff and determining you know, flows of pipe networks and things like that and how there's really no one set way to do it and how maybe that could be an issue going forward with your projects and especially when it comes to cost and, and uh, aspects like that. So just a little bit about Clear Creek Solutions. Um, we've provided hydrologic services for quite a while now. The founders have 40 plus years of experience and most notably we created uh, the WWHM 2012 that's used in Western Washington for stormwater mitigation as well as software for California and even internationally. So really specializing in developing you know, hydrobot and flow duration requirements for jurisdictions and then designing software to make it easy to use and actually achieve these um, different requirements in these jurisdictions. And so, and then we teach workshops on those different modeling aspects. So the first question that you have to kind of ask is, let's say you're just writing a report for your company or for a project or whatever, um, how many use, use only like one software to do it, right? You use Microsoft Word, probably most of you, or whatever your word processing program is, right? You wouldn't then like write half of it on, you know, handwrite it and then put it in Microsoft Word and then bring it in the notebook and then by the time you're done, that's your report, right? You probably sit down, you probably have one way to do it, uh, most of the time anyways. And so that's how, you, that's how you get this process done. And why would you complicate that process by transferring all your written information between all these different softwares, right? That just doesn't make any sense. But that's what we do in the stormwater world, right? So think about this. Can you use just one stormwater program to create your entire stormwater design? Probably not, right? I'm talking about most, mostly the entire process, not just I'm modeling the pipe network or I'm just determining runoff. We're talking about the whole process, right? Pro probably can't use one program for that. And if you do, maybe there's some deficiencies there in that program that you're using. And so most of you probably think, well, no, I have to use several different things or I have to move things back and forth to achieve the result I want. And so most likely you're using a hodgepodge of different methods to finally get your project across the finish line. And this is actually isn't your fault. The tool doesn't really exist that we're looking for or the tool isn't really well known that we're trying to use to get this design process across the finish line. So this is wasting you valuable time, money, and resources that can be devoted elsewhere. And we know, especially in consulting or even in a government agency, that time is money and incredibly valuable resource for determining, you know, then finishing our project. And so imagine this, you're just about to start your, your stormwater design project, the, the contract is a go, or maybe you're working at a government jurisdiction and uh, you're beginning this project. And now you're trying to collect all the relevant information and get started with your stormwater design. So maybe you just received some project information from your clients and you need to create the different land use areas from the project site and figure out how much of that runoff is coming from the project site, right? That's a pretty standard issue. You might have a five acre site, it could have been forced completely before you even began the project. And now a developer wants to put some parking lots there, some buildings, some roofs, whatever he decides. And so you need to determine what is that excess runoff, especially in Western Washington, we need to determine how much more runoff is coming from that site, how do we compare it to what the runoff was before, and then how, how are we able to match that, that flow duration, that's what we use in Western Washington. So do you use something that is continuous simulation software, such as HSPF, which is the basis for something like WWHM 2012, or your own personal hand calculations using the rational method, depending what jurisdiction you're in, right? Um, or subcatchments and EPA swims. So it's like you already have this option overwhelming, you know, right? You're already overwhelmed with all these choices. And sure, your jurisdiction will determine a bit what you're going to end up doing, but there is a lot of ways to go about this. And a lot of the times it's not going to be in one software or one approach that can get you across the finish line. And so after you computed all that runoff, you need to construct your, your pipe network and get your hydraulics going for your project. And so you already created the runoff hydrographs in a different software. So you will need to then bring that information. So for example, let's say you're doing this in WWHM, which is what we use in Western Washington. You might have created hydrographs in WWHM, but now we can't create a pipe network in it. So now we've got to bring it into something else, maybe something like EPA Swim 
you bring it into EPA Swim. So now you're already bringing data from one software into another and um, having to export all that data that's a lot of lost time that goes into that and then bring that into the program. Except in this project, there's been a change to your land use information. So now you have to go back to the beginning in this hypothetical scenario. Change the land use information again, you have to start all over, right? And you've already wasted a bunch of time doing this and then your, your clock is ticking, your budget's running low. And it really wasn't even your fault because this is the best tools that you have available at this point. And so this does really seem like an efficient process. It doesn't seem like an efficient process to me. So that's why we're kind of exploring how we can streamline this process better for stormwater engineers and hydrologists to be able to achieve their goal when it comes to their project. All right, so now's where I get to talk. <laughs> so, um, as you just talked about, you have hydrology, you have hydraulics. In a straightforward design, you can use WWHM in Western Washington, design your facility. If you're doing pipe sizing, you then have to do single event pipe sizing in another program to determine if the pipes you design are the correct size. Uh, up and down the West Coast, we have we have over a dozen versions of our software. They all have different criteria, and people have to use different models to achieve the same thing. Most of it is based on either SWIM, some form of, of a SCS computation, or HSPF. And that's just the West Coast. Go across the country, almost all of it's single event at that point. People are using SWIM or some other method to produce their event flows. Mark just got done talking about in Portland where they were talking about the 50 year event or 25 year event. And obviously in HSPF we don't deal with those events, we deal with continuous flow. And so Western Washington, no matter where you're at, you have a different approach for doing this. So you have hydraulics, you have hydrology, and what you really need is some way to do both well. HSPF is great at hydrology, SWIM is not so great at hydrology. HSPF doesn't have hydraulics, really. SWIM is great at hydraulics. So that's what I'm talking about here. So with, with HSPF, you have one approach for hydrology. With SWIM, you have another. And what we want to do is take the best of both worlds and move HSPF and SWIM together to give you both hydrology and hydraulics you can count on in one tool so that you're not jumping from tool to tool when you do it. Um, so obviously, if you want to do things like compute flow frequencies, show long-term hydrographs, you have to have continuous simulation. SWIM offers continuous simulation, but it's really not that great um, in terms of its quality when you compare it to something like HSPF. This is a duration curve. and that just shows, if you do a typical Western Washington run, you have 60 years of data, 15 minute data. So you have, for example, the blue curve there is your pre-developed flow between two flow ranges. And that's 1.6 million data points. So how do you analyze that? Well, one way you analyze it is through analyzing how often the flow is exceeded. And then in Western Washington, you're required to keep half the two year, the 50 year, you can't exceed it anymore. So then you don't produce any new erosive flows. Well, that's how you do the hydrology. You're not gonna do that in SWIM. That's not something that SWIM really offers as an option, but you can do it in HSPF or in this case, WWHM to size your facility properly. Um, this is just an example of, of a hydrograph or a peak value flow charge or whatever as an output for long-term runs. Um, this is a network that includes, it's an example of the software that you have basins that are HSPF, just like WWHM, basically that's what it is. But this network here is, is EPA SWIM. So you're able to merge the two into one software, run it, and get the great hydraulics of SWIM with the reliable hydrology of HSPF. And down at the bottom here, you can even size your pond, but you have the the flow network that your site has, but sometimes existing flow networks have, are part of your design, or if you're doing a municipal project, it's almost always the existing infrastructure that's there. You need to model it in order to do whatever 
includes your green infrastructure, includes your facility, your regional facility, whatever, has to be all in one model. And if you can only do it in either HSPF or SWIM, you're not gonna get the answers you want. First of all, if you're using SWIM to do facility design, that's you can't even get that approved. You have to do continuous HSPF to get the facility design, but then you have this hydraulics in the meantime. And most people run HSPF, take an output for a week or so, and then use that to stick into SWIM and get a hydraulic result. And that just gives you a little window, that seven days, it's not really the same as running it for 60 years and finding out how this thing is going to perform for all the whole range of events. So merging the two is really the best of both worlds. And that's what I just got done talking about. <laughs> so I jumped ahead on that one. But, um, you know, there's a lot of confusion with what you're allowed to do, what you can do, what this jurisdiction accepts and this jurisdiction. I can say between the 19 counties and the cities in the counties, the numbers of things that change from what they do and don't accept. And then, again, up and down the West Coast, there's such an array. Well, if you have a software that builds those criteria into it, then you have a much better chance of designing things without having to become an expert on the local jurisdiction's requirements. Uh, so that's just one of the things that's included in there. Okay, so, yeah. This is the problem with HSPF that I just talked about, where you just you don't have any of these options in it. WWHM's HSPF in a better user interface, but it still doesn't have these options. Um, go ahead. And then the hydraulic software, SWIM, has its limitations. Runtime being a big one. The type of hydrology it has, that's another one. Most of your hydraulic softwares aren't very good at generating hydrology, so they have their limitations as well. And then, uh, for example, in WWHM model, the, the LID elements, the green infrastructure elements, are very obvious and simple to use um, and tested and have been proven to be effective and accurate. So, you know, it's nice to have that benefit. And, and so we've kind of determined that. Back to you. Yeah, some form of an integrated software package is going to be paramount going forward for uh, stormwater designs. And so being able to combine these hydraulic and hydrologic model processes is it's going to be pretty pivotal, or pivotal to improving the design efficiency and the cost of projects and things like that. So some form of an all-encompassing software is probably needed, like I said, to reduce the cost. And so universal methodology to improve communication and longevity, especially when you're working with jurisdictions or other companies where you know, you're, at, you're asking for, we need this data or we need this project data, going forward, if there was some more, more form of a universal way to be able to get the correct information for a project and then move forward, it's gonna be a lot easier to then model that you know, going forward into the future. And so, being able to combine HSPF, continuous simulation, and SWIM uh, is actually possible and something we've experimented with. And so, by, by being able to run HSPF, generate those flow frequency values and the hydrographs and be able to implement that with EPA SWIM's hydraulic modeling system so we can generate those comprehensive results and look at the entire system and not just a small snapshot of your modeling situation. And then be able to integrate all these analysis tools and interface and then these different elements, like we said, the, the green infrastructure like bioretention, and be able to implement that with a, a city's existing uh, pipe infrastructure, but then also be able to determine, okay, we're changing the land use in these ways for our project, we're adding this much impervious area, maybe it's a wetland, being able to determine how that's going to work with the existing infrastructure, include your own green infrastructure, and just look at the entire system and save a lot of this going back and forth time as we kind of described before. I think it's really sort of the future of being able to model our entire hydrologic system for your new stage. And so that's kind of what I'm describing here. Your project data can be easily be tracked. If people are using a similar integrated model, you'll be able to pass that data pretty easily look at it, analyze it, and then make those changes quickly and not have to go back, as I described before, in the example project where you built something in HSPF, you had to transfer into SWIM, but there was a project change, which happens all the time. Things are always changing. Going back, modifying it, and have to go through all that hard work again just to get you back to your one week's worth of results, as we described before. So, 
that's our, our talk on that. Do we have any questions on that? Yeah. So when you talk about needing a way to integrate the models, do you think are you thinking that could be accomplished with just like uh, let's say just a Python library or whatever that just translates data back and forth, or do you think something oh, more okay. intensive would be needed? So that the di we're trying to do this without it being an advertisement. We've developed the software that does that. Um, but that's not the reason we're talking about it. The reason we're talking about it is that dealing with all these different jurisdictions, I have just seen that Portland's a great one because they have an area of it that actually requires a version of our model. And then they have other areas that don't. And so the engineers are always having discussions with this and giving me calls. I get calls from Salem in Oregon who requires continuous simulation to do their design but don't have a model for their engineers to use. And so they call me up and go, what are we supposed to do? And I'm like, I don't know. The, 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 their mixed you know, uh, requirements are killing you. And I get all through California as well. And so the whole concept is, is that we need to come up with a tool that allows both the hydrology and hydraulics that can be universally used by everybody. And we can sort of mesh a lot of these different requirements because the, the engineers that I hear from, I'm just like, I feel sorry for them. It's like, how in the world are they supposed? Sometimes there's ordinances that contradict. They, they literally do this and this, and it's impossible to do both. And you're just like, oh, what are they supposed to do? You know, you have to have a drawdown time in under 48 hours, but you have an avenue orifice so small to match your pre-developed flow. And so the small orifice doesn't allow a drawdown time. So they're like, what do we do? And I'm going, I, you don't, I don't know. Beg from your local jurisdiction reviewer that you get an approval you know so so yeah the the way we've done it in our software is it's just you know you don't know that you're actually using both softwares it's just merged um, and so it's in it's fantastic that way but the reason for this talk is just the awareness that we need to move to something that's less tools less options Less, hey, I got to do this to size a pipe. I got to do this to size a pond. I got to do this to size my bioretention. There's a, yeah. there's a couple places in California where you have to use a different method to do bioretention sizing than you do to do your hydro mod for your pond, and another method to do your pipe sizing. I just want to reiterate, reiterate that doesn't mean we want like blanket requirements across the board. Like obviously, different states and jurisdictions need different things. But what we've done with you know the software we've we use for the other jurisdictions like in California or Western Washington, you can integrate these differences into the software and it just, they show up in the software and the user doesn't have to have all this information in their head. So we're not looking for like a blanket system, no. but some form, some way, like think about using AutoCAD as a simple engineer, that's pretty standard across the board for a lot of projects, right? But it can be used for a lot of different things. Similarly, we're looking at trying to develop something like that just for, the ease of engineers and being able to model and use them in jurisdiction mm -hmm. to actually get your projects off the ground. So, um, you mentioned before that like using SWIM it seemed to be uh, going to take longer than say uh, in WWHF. Uh, when combining them together, do you find that the like the time to model that it's like additive or additive? Uh, so. Yeah, obviously, swim is swim. It's it has its you know the more complex the hydraulic system, the slower it runs. Um, and when you combine them, you have issues. So the basically the com the most most commonly right now, someone will take a week out of a hydrograph. They'll run it through swim. It might take an hour, and they'll get a result. Um, that doesn't change if you do the combined or you do the separate. It's still the same thing, but. Um, in our case, we've developed the ability to basically run long-term runs at the same amount of time it would take you to do a short-term run, just in using computer processors in a different way. So we've been able to run 60-year runs that should take three weeks and you know, in eight hours, that kind of thing, using the, the ability to use more processors when you do the runs. So it allows us to do the long-term swim runs take a look at how they're actually going to perform over time with the hydraulics, and you get a different answer than if you do a short-term swim run or if you do just the WWHM itself, your facility size changes. So knowing that 
that's the best answer so far. It's also the most complicated one to get to, but it's the most accurate one in terms of how we design our, all of our facilities pushes us forward and saying we need to move towards this. Somehow we need to get there because it's doing a better job of predicting how a facility is going to perform over time. And yeah. So may I ask, what's the name of the software package you are developing for combining the HSTF and the... Uh, it's, a, it's a tricky name to remember. WWHM Swim. Wim Swim, <laughs> that's what we call it. So uh, it's basically just saying we've, we've merged the two softwares together and we just hyphenated the names. So that's all it is. And um, yeah. So have jurisdictions, um, how are they, how receptive are they to this so, software package? So the, neat, the interesting part of it is, is that because at its heart, it's just HSPF and SWIM, both of which are accepted, you know, at the current levels of acceptance everywhere. There's no jurisdictional need for involvement. For example, I do a project in our software. I can give a jurisdiction an HSPF soft project and a SWIM project and say, here. I don't have to give them anything that's proprietary. Um, but at the same time, you can pull out a WWHM project from it, or you can pull out just the SWIM file from it. So, since it's broken down in pieces, there's no need for a, an acceptance from any of the jurisdictions. You're just doing the work the best you can as an engineer and providing results. Um, I've used this for, I don't know, 15 or 20 different jurisdictions in Western Washington at this point. And, and you know, they're all pretty thrilled with it because of the fact that we're giving them better answers. But um, it's like the, the requirements for your design are here. We're just saying, let's use, you know, let's use a better tool to get there to as get opposed there. to yeah. using something that, that takes longer or something like yeah. that. It's a place like San Diego has swim continuous is one of the options. You can use one, our model or you can use swim. And if, if somebody were to use the WWHM swim model, then there'd be no, it'd be the same thing. They wouldn't complain about it, so. And the, the computational challenge, just, just to follow up on this question. Uh, so you're saying you're able to run a continuous um, SWIM model, but is it multi-processor computers or? Yeah, it's multi-processor. So basically, if you have access to, and you know, you can get into the weeds on it, but basically if you have access to 64 processors, you can run 64 years at the same time. And so that speeds things up considerably when you're doing 60 year runs, or in the case in the project in Lake Stevens I did, I had to do 72 years of lake levels in Lake Stevens, which with, with the hydraulics of the, the outlet channel, and you just simply couldn't do it accurately any other way. It just wouldn't work. And so really beneficial in that sense. And you can get an idea of how things are going to perform over time. And you know, light continuous simulation, the idea is, is that we don't have a 50-year rainfall event give us a 50-year flood. We run 50 years of data and find out statistically what that 50-year flood would be. So we let the data tell us instead of us telling the data. Um, so yeah. It's always been an issue if a piece of software is going to be embraced by people with engineering licenses or professional hydrologists. Or so they look at something like Vodflow, which has been looked right. after by the USGS. They, they have a fairly good sense that it works and it's, it's reliable. So when EPA was supporting uh, SWIM and HSPF, people knew that they had a very reliable piece of, mm -hmm. or two bits of stuff. So it seems to me that the critical bit is to get the two married together, and or, or if the core of engineers, the HEC, has embraced a piece of stuff there, people would use it because they know it's been vetted very carefully and it's updated. So it seems to me the critical bit is to get the married stuff into a mode where one of those outfits sort of say, we give it our blessing and they will keep it updated. That, that seems a critical bit to me. Yeah, I mean, that's always an important thing. And so what we've 
to, to bypass the need to really pursue that politically, when you run this model, it produces an EPA SWIM 5, because sure. we just brought their code in. So we're literally using the EPA SWIM 5, and it produces the control file for that, as well as the output, which can be read in any form of SWIM, including just EPA's free SWIM 5. So there's no need to vet it, it's already been vetted. It's their swim. I'm thinking of the longer term maintenance yeah. and racing. I practice. totally agree. We're with you. <laughs> yeah, totally with you. The company that uh, my other founder, Doug Byerline, and I founded Clear Creek Solutions, but really all we were was a, an office of a company called Aquaterra Consultants, yeah. which wrote the code of HSPF. So yeah, we come. So <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. So. You know, we, we, we came from a, the history of being part of the developers of HSPF and have been, I've been embedded in SWIM for 30 years when I was compiling my own version of it. And so we just kept them both, they both run as HSPF and SWIM. We brought them together in one software package so the user doesn't have to become an expert in both of those, which is really hard to do. Um, but you're right, if someone else comes along and says, that's good. Let's use that. That's that's the best way to go. Easier said than done. But it's yeah, it's it's always takes money, and people don't want to spend money. Great job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, and we all get to be first at lunch. <laughs> we actually finished on time. <laughs> all right. Thank you.